When we think of locally grown food, usually a farm comes to mind with plots of veggies and tidy rows. But for a forager who hunts and gathers wild food that grows everywhere from backyards to forests, the boundaries of local food are limitless. I look out in the world and I see just food everywhere. And I know that if people had an education to know what is good and what can be eaten, they could go out and provide for themselves a little bit better than they are right now. Cooper knows which wild plants belong on, say, a salad plate and where to find them. That has made her the go-to forager for Indianapolis chefs and farmer's market vendors, who ask Cooper to harvest wild weeds and greens, mushrooms, berries, and other intriguing ingredients. I was actually serving at a restaurant and a friend's parents came in and mentioned that some chefs were using weeds in their salads. And I was like, I wonder what weeds you can eat. Like, I just got really curious about it. I think I started in my yard, just using the things that were already growing around me, just learning which ones of them were edible and which weren't. By day, Cooper spends her time working at local farms, which has shaped her experience as a forager. I think that we live in a very like controlled world right now. Everything's kind of polished and filtered, especially like when you're farming. You can kind of manipulate your agriculture, the time you plant, and the time you harvest and the implements you put into that ground will make a huge difference. But wild food is kind of something that just grows itself. And it kind of connects you to what's going on in the natural world, I think. It makes you pay more attention. Right after I started foraging, I could barely drive places because I was so busy, like looking on the sides of the road, like to see if there was anything there I could eat. Nowadays, requests change with the season. In the summer, chefs ask Cooper to harvest mushroom varieties like oyster, hen of the woods, and chanterelles, which are her favorite. Foraging is definitely a treasure hunt. I think that's the part I like the most about it. I, I, I like start beaming when I talk about it. It's so exciting, it's, it's a bit of a gamble, especially like mushroom hunting. They're so unpredictable, you just don't know, and when you get a really good patch, it's just, it's kind of a high almost. <laughs> So when you're mushroom hunting, you want a mesh bag or some kind of basket. And what we're looking for right now is beech trees and oak trees. Because chanterelles have an association with those types of trees. And you aren't looking for dead trees. They actually, they like the living, alive trees. A lot of mushrooms will grow on dead trees, but chanterelles are not one of those. Chanterelles are actually pretty easy to spot because they are orange. My fingers actually turn orange every year during chanterelle season because you're constantly picking up those orange mushrooms. Oh gosh, there's a huge slug on it. Do you see that? Slugs like these instead of snails. That's another way I kind of tell what I'm doing when I'm mushroom hunting. A lot of the same pests you'll find on that variety over and over, and it's almost like a double check to make sure that you're picking the variety you think you are, the pests you see on it. So we are getting towards the end of the season, and you'll start finding a lot more dried out ones. They start drying around the edges here. And they kind of work their way in. At least one chef tells me he likes them a little bit better after they started to dry out, because the flavors start to concentrate in the mushroom. But I'm a fresh girl myself. You kind of have to be a little bit of a billy goat if you want a mushroom hunt. You're up and down hills all day long. I think this is like the best shape I've ever been in in my life. I love that it's a job I can kind of go out and get away from everybody and just be out there by myself for a few hours doing it. And I, I love nature. I love being in the woods. And flavors, honestly. It's always fun to like learn a new flavor and explore something that you have never touched before, I think. You can follow all of Summer's latest foraging adventures at her Twitter account, SummerStarCoop.